Blockbuster, y'all. The Knicks have acquired Carl Anthony Towns from Minnesota for Julius Randle, Dante DiVincenzo in the first round pick. What the heck? What is going on with September 27th? September 27th, 2023 is when Damian Lillard got traded to the Bucks. And now a year later, we see another Blockbuster deal dealing with some star players. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns just made an All-NBA team, what, two years ago? And Julius Randle just made an All-NBA team, what, last year? So we see two All-NBA players get traded for each other. It's, it's rare that you see a talent for talent deal um, and and kind of, this is not necessarily a talent for talent deal. This is like the business of it all, the financial implications of building a really good team. Um, it just became a little bit too stressful for Minnesota, but we'll get through that. I, I, I feel bad for Carthony Towns, right? A couple minutes before the trade broke, he tweeted dot, dot, dot. We really didn't know what that meant. And then boom, the first sham wows that we calling them of the offseason is um, him getting traded away. And we basically just watched Carthony Towns grow up in Minnesota. It will be weird to see him in the Knicks jersey. He comes in as this super high potential star as a rookie with these big ass feet and super clumsy. And he turns himself to an all NBA caliber player. And one of my favorite things about Cat is that after last season of him and Rudy Gobert not really working out, this year he bought in defensively and they were able to coexist. And again, the team was as successful as any time in their franchise and he gets shipped out. Yeah, think about all of the different integrations that Carthony Towns has been through in Minnesota. Like they've gone through management changes, coaching changes. He's gone through so very much. A rebuild when it's him and Wiggins, they acquire Jimmy Butler. The Jimmy Butler thing to work out. Another rebuild behind that. They get the first overall pick, Anthony Edwards, and they have one year of contention before ownership says, damn, we got to trade him away. And I somewhat feel vindicated in a way because I said that it was inevitable that they were going to have to make this decision because the team was so very expensive. Now, I me mean, personally, if I was the billionaire owner, hopefully in the future, when, when my, my team that I own just goes on the most successful run at, basically in franchise history, I am okay with the team being hella expensive for a chance to run it back one more time. When we see how good or how much better Anthony Edwards has got every single year of his career, if we kept the same roster and just, just really relied on Anthony Edwards' growth as a player, we could have potentially won a championship. But because I know that no matter who was owning this goddamn team, they were not going to pay for this team. I said in the video that Carl Anthony Towns will probably be traded. Anthony Edwards, max contract. You're not trading him away. Rudy Gobert, max contract. You're not trading him away. He's one of the best defensive players in basketball, and you traded every first-round pick in existence to get him. You're not trading him away. J.D. McDaniel signed an extension last offseason that hits this year. Now he's re-signed an extension. It's a small extension for his value, but the last guy that leaves is Carl Anthony Towns. So though I hate that it's happening, I, I told people to brace themselves because it will be happening eventually. There are just cer certain management groups and ownership groups that will, you know, just make necessary moves to save some money. And this is what it is. Obviously, it has nothing to do with the amount of talent on the roster. This team was what the two seed this season that made it as far as you could potentially go um, with a team like this. And they, they shift Carl Anthony Towns to New York. Now, he's going to from a contender to a contender. So I, I'm going to be honest with you. I love his fit in New York. Um, we made a video about the Knicks last week, but that was before we knew that Mitchell Robinson was going to be out, not just for the start of the season, but he might not be back until January. And that left a huge, huge hole for this team when it comes to the center position. It's like, okay, we're going to run with, let's say, uh, Jalen Brunson, Mikael Bridges, OG Ananobi, Julius Randle, and let's say Jericho Sims as the spot five. And then Tom Thibodeau said that Julius Randle should play some five for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, I like the idea of that small ball lineup. And now you sure up that center position by bringing in Carl Anthony Towns. And based on what we've seen from Carl Anthony Towns from this season, he can run your five position, right, for them for the start of the season. Then when Mitch Robb come back, Cat can slide back up. We watched him guard Kevin Durant in the playoff series. We've watched him slide to the four and hold his own on both sides of the ball last season, right? So this gives them a little bit more flexibility. One thing to say about Leon Rose, and I've seen Knicks fans and Timberwolves fans pissed about this trade. Um, Leon Rose, is gonna he's going for it. With the Mikel Bridges trade, and then now with this one, they are going for the New York Knicks to be a champion. It does suck that you have to trade away Dante DiVincenzo. You lose that, that, that connection, that Nova connection, because he's going to Minnesota. But if we were trying to figure out what's next for Julius Randle. Again, Tom Thibodeau on this interview said that Julius Randle was ready to adjust to whatever the team needs. What the team didn't need is ass, and they traded him away for Carl Anthony Towns.
ESPN is on their stuff. They updated this immediately. So this is the projected starting lineup for the Knicks this season. It is Jalen Brunson, Mikael Bridges, O. John and Obi, Josh Hart at the four. I mean, yeah, yeah, because he's a six foot four rebounder. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns, Mitch Robson out with his injury. I mean, that does hurt that that depth because I thought that Dante DiVincenzo coming off the bench would have been phenomenal for them because he's a 40% three-point shooter. But now backup point guard Miles McBride, backup shooter guard is kind of non-existent, but all of these guys kind of coexist and play the same position slash different positions. So you probably will see minutes where it is, I don't know, Kata Bates, Diop playing up. And then, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They did sacrifice some depth for this trade, but I, I think it makes sense in the grand scheme of things. And we talked about the Minnesota Timbers being um, being an expensive team. The Knicks are riding that as well with the OG Ananobi extension. The great thing is Jalen Brunson is the most selfless star in basketball. And he left that 100 M's on the table. But I wonder, and I'm sure some, some cap nerds, and I don't mean that as a derogatory thing, are going to write the article about what happens with Mikhail Bridges this offseason with his, or was it this offseason, next offseason, regardless, with his money be coming up. Because in my mind, when Jalen Brunson left that money on the table, most of that was going to Mikhail. But now you're fitted in the eighth most expensive player in basketball to that lineup. So I don't know what's going on with the Knicks cap flexibility i don't think that's really relevant i don't think leon rosen really give a damn right now they have an owner that i guess at this point is willing to pay and this is the best knicks roster that we've seen or i've seen in my lifetime uh, i was born in the 90s so maybe not in the lifetime but like in my adult life by far the best knicks team and i can't say that it's the perfect trade but i understand what they're going for i understand what they're going for because Anthony Towns, again, gives you the versatility to run him at the four or the five, but because of the defense of Mikael Bridges, O. John Anobi, and Josh Hart, you feel okay if he is your five, even though previous years in his career, the reason they traded for Rudy Gobert in Minnesota is because him at the five had a very limited ceiling defensively. I think that may, this is a team where we can have him, I don't know, just be better at that five position defensively, if that makes sense. I don't love trading away Dante DiVincenzo. Like, I'm okay if the Julius Randle part of it because it did feel like he was the odd man out, right? I, I was going to give him the benefit of the doubt coming into the season that he'll be able, like Tip Thibodeau said, to change his game accordingly, to fit with these dudes, yada, yada, yada. But him being traded away doesn't hurt me too bad. It was a Dante DiVincenzo piece, especially considering the type of um, postseason run he had with him hitting basically game winning shots and having 30-point games and so on and so forth. You shift him away. Um, and that just kind of sucks, right? The the Villanova thing lasted uh, all of, what, two months? <laughs> when, when did they acquire Mikael Bridges? Like two months ago, right? And it, it lasted then. I mean, they still have Josh Hart and, and Mikael Bridges and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit tougher. I like this a lot less for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'll be honest with you. The Carl Anthony Towns Rigo Bear fit took a while. It took a year. And even with it being good, it was still clunky at times. Julius Randle is not nearly the offensive talent and, and, and as versatile as Carl Anthony Towns and, and malleable as Carl Anthony Towns. So you're telling me that him and Rudy Gobert as a front court, I just, I don't, I got, we got to see it on court, obviously. We got to see it on court, obviously. But I do not like that, really. I just don't. I just, I just don't like it on paper. Here's their projected rotation. Mike Conley, Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, Julius Randle, Rudy Gobert. Nas Reed off the bench, Dante DiVincenzo off the bench, Nikhil Alexander-Walker off the bench. Like this trade does help their depth, right? Because they get two good basketball players. Um, Because like pretty much everybody on the second unit, I trust. Even Joe Ingles being super old, he had this really great connection. Rudy Gobert, what was that, uh, seven years ago, it feels like. Um, So I trust him as a pick and roll ball handler, Rudy Gobert. Um, and then he did sneakily shoot very well from three again last season in his limited amount of minutes. Nikhil Alexander-Walker had a breakout year. So like there are some things here depth wise that could be very interesting. This does give them an opportunity to maybe have Leonard Miller play more minutes. And I'm intrigued by Leonard Miller as a player. But overall, this feels very clunky. And you're really and I mean, really, really trusting that the three point shooting that Jaden McDaniels provided last season is real. I mean, last year. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Last year wasn't the year. It was two years ago. He was a 40% three-point shooter. This year was 33%. In the postseason, he played a little bit higher than that, or a lot higher than that, at a 43% clip in his 16 games in the postseason. So you're really, really relying on his three-point shot being as real as possible because if his three-point shot is real, knowing Julius Randle as a player, this, this court completely, completely shrinks up 
for Anthony Edwards, and this is years removed, right? So I don't want to bring this back up, but I remember when they when they get Rudy Gobert on the team, he talked about the lack of spacing, right? He made a comment about the lack of spacing, and Carl Anthony Towns is arguably the greatest three point shooting big ever. Arguably, I ain't saying I got love for Dirk here, but arguably the greatest three point shooter shooting big of all time. That is spacing, and not only is he a great three point shooter, he's a respected three point shooter because I think those two things are what makes somebody amazing at that job, right? There are a lot of people that shoot. 36 to 40 percent that aren't respected as shooters right all their shots are completely wide open they're they're not being guarded Carlton Towns is guarded all the time and that's the spacing that he provides Julius Randle doesn't have that same luxury 31 percent three-point shooter a guy that wants the ball to, to dribble and create for himself Carlton Towns was quick and off of it a lot of times and sometimes it's just led in a lot of random turnovers but it, they have to change so much about their offensive identity by trading for Julius Randle. And all of this is because the, the owners got they got they got um a little bit too frugal. Cause Julius Randle was on the last year of his deal. He's got a player option for next season. Who knows if he takes that? Dante DiVincenzo's on a team friendly deal. Again, Carthony Towns is one of the more expensive contracts in basketball. So it's like we save a little bit more money for the now and also for the future, depending on what Julius Randle does with that player option. I I don't like it. And maybe I'll be swayed once we see it together, but I don't like it. This is just a lot and a lot of trust and, and Jaden McDaniels' three-point shot and more responsibility for Anthony Edwards. Like one thing that Julius Randle does provide is like this, this jumbo playmaking four, which it could be intriguing because Mike Conley is 90, 99 years old. And then the backup point guard, Rob Dillingham is 17 years old. So like having Julius Randle be like a primary ball handler slash facilitator for the team could be interesting. But the lack of space, like this team became infinitely more easy to guard. Um, their defensive identity doesn't shift much other than Julius Randle having moments in time where he's not completely locked into the defensive side of the ball while well, I just saw Carthen and Towns really do that for an 82 game season and then the postseason as well this just for me personally turned the Minnesota Timberwolves from real contenders to not that and I hate that for them Minnesota fans deserve a more than a year of contention dog and they could still win a bunch of regular season games do not get me wrong I still believe this team should win a bunch of regular season games but when it comes to a seven game series I think you can scheme against them so so, so much easier. Carthy Towns had a track record of being a bad postseason player, especially after the one season when Jimmy Butler was on the team and then um, last year as well. This year, the conversation shifted. Like, it's not like we're like, oh my God, he's a, the greatest uh, postseason player of all time. But we had really, really good moments in his postseason last year. Julius Randle has zero of those. Julius Randle is one of the worst playoff performers we've ever seen for a star player. The sample size ain't that large. I'm not, but like... I just don't like it, man. And it's 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 the frugalness of the ownership. And I think that's just a plague on the league. I like an owner that's willing to go balls to the wall. We're going to pay off. Steve Ballmer, say what you want about the Clippers teams. His ass is going to pay. He is willing to pay. It ain't worked out. But I can respect that man as an owner because he's like, how much money you need? Say less. Second apron, not a problem to me. Minnesota did not like that. And the best trade they got was for Julius Randle. Funny enough... If you didn't know me, I'm also an internet general manager, which means that I make trades on 2K all damn day. I did a trade very similar to this in the 2K video um, very recently, and I didn't have Dante DiVincenzo on the trade. <laughs> so it was a really much, really an L for Minnesota, but I don't know, man. I don't love it for Minnesota. I think this is a, a, a worthy bet for the Knicks. Um, it does eliminate some of their depth for sure, for sure eliminate some of their depth. But I think their offensive upside just increased by a ton with this one singular trade. Their defense, again, I, I trust Cat a little bit more this year than I did two years ago. I don't know if they're still going to maintain being a top five defense like they had the potential to with Mitchell Robinson on that back end. But the offense should be disgusting. And I mean that in, the, in, the, in a positive way. Um, I don't know if there's any other moves or any other things to talk about with this trade, at least as of right now. I can't wait to see what training camp really holds. Um, shout out to Big Cat. He, he's going to be fine in New York. I, I promise you that. And we'll see what happens with Minnesota.